we should bring this part up. What make in your like right now since you've been to like shows and shit? Yeah. What makes the Oz scene different? Well, what makes the Oz scene different to me is one the energy. We will all we will all talk about. Yeah. This. So. Like I said, the one big thing that really attracts me to these this Oz scene is the energy uh, that it brings. Not only is, like, the tracks will sound different through headphones to what they sound in real life. Like, you'll get a lot more energy from a stage presence from these artists than what you would get than listening to them on a track sort of thing. Like, yeah. in the room, you feel how, like, you feel them... It's like they're, uh, it's like they're honestly... Are. No, it's like they honestly got they got crowd control, man. With the way that they spit, with the way that they they hold themselves on stage, everything. It's like they've got crowd control. Like you seen at Grime Wave, like freaking those points where freaking people were right up in each other's faces, spitting, and and, yeah. and it was just like that competitive hungriness. Yeah. For and me, it, I honestly think what makes it different is the artists stay to watch other artists perform. Yeah. Yeah, that's... Not, not only that, there's so many things you can talk but about that makes the scene that's unique that's a in itself. thing. A lot of people, they do the show and, and they go. And they go, yeah. They just oh. bounce. Oh, all right, look, I've done my job. Look, I get Wombat. my money, I'm yeah. out of here. I don't at, care. At Grime Wave, Wombat was in the crowd like he was a normal fan. Like, all, all of them were, bro. Like, friggin' Really? Mom, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, man. Yeah. Dude, what the fuck is I should have gone to Grand Wave? Eh? Bro, um, Wombat, I love you. <laughs> Wombat's a fucking machine. Like man. everyone though, you like I have a video of Monk just losing his shit. Bro, okay, if my forty-year-old mother can love Wombat, man, <laughs> I'm pretty sure the fucking if you're sleeping on Wombat, you're a fucking idiot. Wake yeah. up to yourself. Yeah. Most of Australia fucks with one bad Yeah, eh? like... And then, and America, and UK, and everyone else. Yeah. It's just got mad in One bad's back like a zombie! Right, one bad's back from the dead. No! Like he's, he's, his <laughs> wordplay, his fucking... Like you thought I was gonna say, next bitch. He's a beast. He's just an absolute beast, man. Like... Uh, there's no other, like, you, uh, to me, when somebody says, I'll describe what Wombat's like, you just say beast. That's, that's the only way I can fucking nah, describe I, it. I just say energy, energy, energy. Oh, well, <laughs> that's how you describe it, right? That's what I, that, that's what I mean. It's like, your, your, view, your views on this is, like, completely different to mine, drop bears. What's your opinion? Uh, what, what makes the Oz scene different? Yeah, you need to you. different to you. We can still hear you. I'm thinking, in all honesty, like, and I've thought about this a bit because it's such a broad question. Like, what makes it different to me? There's lots of little things, there's like a few big things and stuff as well. The accent, like, I find, oh, this is probably a bit off topic, hey, but I find promoting and doing anything in the Oz scene, like, it's different, it's a challenge. It's a challenge because Australian rappers are so different. We get blamed a lot for being hev views. heavily influenced by America and well, fuck nowadays off, heavily influenced the UK. Uh, we used to be, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. I agree. If yeah. anything, but yeah, that were like the now we're foundations for us to build our own scene. Yeah, yeah. in my opinion. But everyone's heavily influenced by both of them. Well, yeah, they obviously. We started... literally had a concert called Grime Wave. <laughs> that grime was, but it's crazy. Australian grime. Yeah. It's not. UK grime or anything like that, like it's we're our own, we're our own unique culture and our own unique style of rap. Yeah. Like we're not like okay. So when you start talking about rap to me, like I, I, I love me US scene. Like I absolutely love me US scene. I like big fan of KRS One, Rakim, Big L, all the original dons of the US scene. Yeah. But then you look at, I don't know too much about the UK grime scene. But to, uh, UK grime would probably be like Skepta, Wild. Yeah, I, like, I know the basics like Skepta. I know the bigger names of like. Um, yeah, all I know of, um, oh fuck, what are they called? Um, um, boy, better know. Don't even know them. BBK, which is Skepta's crew. Skepta, JME, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right, all right, all right. All those boys. Hearings, see, yeah, see, that's, I didn't even know that they were And, a group. oh, Tim Westwood. See, like, yeah, okay, that makes a bit that makes a bit more sense to me now. But what I mean you know by that is, yeah. is Yeah, of course. Yeah. Anyway, where was I getting to with this? You just distracted me. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, you know, you've got US scene which is like, you know, and you've you li you've literally got got to give props to the black and Hispanic community over there because yeah. there would be no a hip hop rap scene at all in the world if it wasn't for them. 
So then that yeah. that built them up, right? I see that. That built them up, and it's built everybody else up around the world. And then all of a sudden, it's dropped into our shores. You know, from what About I've time. researched and what I've what I've found, you had lads like the Sydney Sydney searchers that were prior to Cursor and stuff like that, and then Bliss and Esso and all that sort of stuff. Then you had your Cursor, and then Cursor was like this the, is why we have Eddie and Striker here. And then Cursor was the guy to to some of us, like to me who pretty much opened a massive door for artists like Husky, Chillin' It, all those guys. That's that's my view of it. So Cursor opened those doors and Cursor brought that platform for everybody. I have a question. Do you think Cursor got influenced by Scribe? I don't know. Because Scribe's music blew up here. I don't... Yeah, uh, I'm... Yeah. I can... To Scribe, be honest, if you want to know, Scribe is an NZ rapper. Uh, to be honest, I wouldn't say... I but you get what I mean, like though? Like, like, his yeah, music yeah. blew out of nowhere in the Oz scene. <laughs> but then, then again, you think about it, right? Like, it's like, maybe like people started to take rap more seriously because a Kiwi can blow. If yeah. a Kiwi could blow up and be all over the radio... And be on like MTV and shit. Do you reckon that like influence? No, but how can that how can that influence us when when he did tr when he did try, but then he got blacklisted from so much shit? Because to me, the reason why like this is how I see it, right? But you know what I mean by that? Yeah, yeah, I do. But to me, the reason because he was before him, right? No, no shit. Scribe like, was how many like, dudes what? Know <laughs> rock a show like this? <laughs> like fuck off, man! You can't like I can't. Scribe was like oh three oh four. But but then again. That's shit that I don't know. Cursor could have been freaking in the booth in the backyard of freaking Campbelltown back then, spitting for all I fucking yeah, know. Like exactly. he could, from what he says in his records that I've listened to, right? He started from a young age, and from interviews and stuff that I've seen with rates and stuff like that, he did start from a young age, mm. and he was pretty fucking passionate about it. Yeah. And see, the one thing that caught my attention with Cursor originally was he did a um, can't remember last night. I think it was over an Outcast beat, mm. and that's I was like. That's an outcast beat. Yeah. Hang on a sec. I'm actually going to give this guy a listen. And then there was a bit of time where I was on and off Cursor for a bit, but then Next Step really fucking grabbed my attention and made me look at Cursor completely differently. And then I went back and I listened to No Rest of the Sickest and all that sort of shit, and that really made me go, fuck, I've overlooked, I've overlooked this cunt hard, mm. like hard out, to the point that I actually sat down and I listened. Cursor is one of the many artists in Australia that has officially made me sit down and listen from an album from front to cover and listening to an album from front to cover to me is like a story is that it's like an audio book in their in their form of yeah. words to me like, yeah, but it has to be set up like that as well have you listened to some of his albums bro like the, no, the intro you know what i mean like, yeah, yeah. like there's, there's a lot of people that don't listen that to that albums exactly because that. of that reason yeah that's yeah. exactly like you listen to me like you listen to all right so nebulizer when i started to listen to it from the start to finish sort of thing. You listen to the Nebulizer and that was like, righto, that's him playing around and seeing what he can do in the booth, right? Yeah. Then the rest of the stuff was him explaining his side of shit and then the rest is him growing and going to what he is. It's interesting to watch that sort of shit because it not only does it show how much Cursor has grown as an artist himself, mm. but it also, to me, it shows that this cunt is fucking serious about what he's doing. Yeah. Uh, he's n uh, no fuck around. Him and all those ABK boys, man, fucking good on them. They've done a fucking big thing for Australian scene, in my personal opinion. Yeah. And everybody prior to that that I don't know that influenced those influenced those boys to fucking come up, good on yous. If I don't know yous and I'm fucking I'm sleeping on yous, I'm sorry, but he's, he's a fucking... The Australian scene has done a fucking really good job to push it, push it to where they are, in my opinion. And I don't care if anybody agrees or well, disagrees, but that's oh, just how I, I see it. I don't know enough. See, yeah. as Cursor says himself, man, it's literally the curse effect, man. It is. It like, is. And one of the things I appreciate about Cursor as an artist, like myself personally, is he doesn't go on about it like a lot of other people. He comes out, he does his music, and then he goes away, man. He, he, he goes and jumps on a boat and sails out to the middle of the sea for a couple of months. Like, yeah. what a mad cunt. He lets his work talk for him. He doesn't need to be on Instagram every day being like, look at me, look at me, look you at me. You take my money where my but mouth is. Well, <laughs> like, well, wasn't around there. His people are looking, regardless, bro. He's but, cursor. Yeah, we yeah, looking. But the thing about that as well... <laughs> Instagram wasn't around. Yeah. Who says that in the new album, bro? Who says, you know, kids these days have got the are blowing up on the in internet and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And, and he's like, rates, remember with me and you used to bang on the fucking, yeah, on exactly. the fucking train windows and we'd hit insane flows, man. Like, shit like that. 
Cursor, I honestly believe that Cursor, like, the reason... His was all word of mouth. Yeah. He, he was spread me? through word of... What, it was mostly word of mouth. Like, I heard you would from hear about, about Cursor from your he, mates, you know, or your mate's older brother or something like that. That's, that's, how, I heard, that's yeah. how I first originally heard of Cursor. Yeah. Yeah. I fucked with like, Cursor. I'm like, what are you talking about? Yeah. And they played this Yeah, song. it was like, oh, Curse is the sickest. You're like, yeah. what the fuck is going on? And now, now that you sit back and you watch this, he's right in his new album, right? And he's like, oh, I'm, I was trolling way before the trolling was the thing to do. Do the curse, bitch. Do the curse, bitch. Like that shit, yeah. that, that, those bars there. He was ahead of his time. Fuck he's always going to be he's ahead of his always, time. Yeah. And, there's, and not only that too, but look at what he's then built for. West I've got Sid. a good question. Would he's you good. say Curse is the soldier boy of... No, no, right, right, no, 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 no Slim Shady. Yeah. He come up doing battle rap. That's how I first caught caught yeah. eye of him, right? Yeah. He did the battle and look at M. He did the same thing. He fucking got fucking second place in fucking rap Olympics before he actually won a rap Olympics. That's actually what I was gonna about him say before, man. I feel like in a way the Cursor story is very similar to Eminem, man. Like literally. It's... He didn't do this specifically that I know of, but like Eminem, part of Eminem's story is it's like similar sa- to Curses. selling CDs. Like, like, the- like he saved up all of his pennies, got CDs printed, and like drove around to local hip hop spots and, and just sold his CD out. Yeah. Out, of the ba- out of the boot of his car. I mean, it's still a story, you know. Like you know, you got a young artist, you know, that has a passion, you know, writing, you know, trying to work their way up, you know, to make themselves successful, have a career and whatnot. And but in the meantime, you know, they're still stuck in a bit of a slump. You know, times are tough, you know, sometimes it's hard to, you know... Yeah, look at all this, look at some of the shit that he talks like about that. in the Nebulizer, like, um... Uh, fucking, what was that track that he talked... There's one that he's, um, talking about, um, like... Oh, they think these kids are freaking hard, or, oh, what is it? It's, um, look, I'm pretty sure it's the track after you, um... So you leave... I can't remember, I'm gonna have to look it up. I know the song, it's in my head, but I can't fucking remember the fucking... I don't know. I don't listen to his music. Yeah, I, I will admit, I don't listen to his music either. Well, I have, I, all right, I have I, listened to his music, but I'm not like... That. I'll be honest, and I'll say this, because I will be fucking 100% honest about this. When I first heard Cursor, I did not like him. It didn't appeal to me at that time in my life, because I just well, didn't want a bar of it, right? It took me till I got older and mature, and started to see the world a bit differently, to then listen to Cursor, and then go, holy fuck, this cunt has a fucking massive point. Like, yeah. not only a massive point that you can relate to, but like, that's the th- that's another thing that attracts me to his music is you can you don't understand where he's coming from, but you can relate to what he's saying. Yeah, that's yeah. another thing that's always attracted to me. And Even so, I but, said well, that I mean, artist evolution. That that's that's it, music in general, though. I mean, like, that, it no, that's a how, real artist. Well, yeah, that's a real a real that's artist. That's the difference who between a, a real artist and a fake artist. A real artist who writes a song right that you can relate to, maybe not in the same way as the artist did, but. That's them achieving their job, mm. like no matter mm. what. I mean, th- that's what I listen to music for. I've always have done, and I always say that. Thank you and bad habits. Like they're probably one of the biggest things that I look at. So when you say to me what the Oz scene is to me, like that's why I refer to Cursor because in a way you can't really talk about the Oz scene without talking about Cursor, because. For fuck's sake. It's a respect thing. It's like if you yeah. don't mention Tupac over in the States, bro, then you're just not giving That's respect. exactly right. That's I like these fucking say little white asses that say I would that. say what he said. KRS. I would yeah, say no, KRS no. is one of those artists that... Bruz. Because he's before Pac. Bruz. Another one's Big Daddy Kane. Big... Oh, oh. If, it oh. For, if, oh. if it wasn't for Big Daddy Kane, no one would know about... And if you go back Pop even further, me. man, if it wasn't for fucking Cool Herc, yeah. we still wouldn't have fucking hip-hop, man. If exactly. he didn't throw that party, we would be fucking... We wouldn't... And not only that, too, Rakim. If you look at some of fucking Rakim's interviews, bro, where he talks about how he developed and fucking got his flow, man, like, he, he refers to one of the things as, like, when you were living over in America and you wanted to be a professional sax- saxophone player, you'd go around and watch all the buskers doing their saxophone thing, and you'd pick up, you wouldn't go out looking at all these fucking top cunts doing their thing because, in a way, they're kind of... 
you know, it's, it's you got to watch it, man, because the way he explains it is so fucking what, perfect. That sounds like you know, you rather go watch the buskers who like they do it because it's that's what they enjoy. Well, for yeah, example, instead of going to like a teacher, where I know it has nothing you're gonna to have to follow it by the book. And so yeah, I, and then it turned into this thing about how he was talking about how he developed his flow, and it was something about the saxophone, how it's like. You know how it's real rhythmic and shit? Mm. How it's like do 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 And he's like, that's how I got it's my... It's a beat. It's, it's just like, that's how I got my flow was with... I, I tried to rhyme with a saxophone, like a guy playing saxophones or something like that. And then, yeah, I'll have to fucking... I can't remember what the interview is called, but it's got him in it. It's got KRS-One in it. I'm pretty sure it's got fucking um, Queen Latifah in it as well. That's another one. Yeah, fucking... She's another one. Oh, bro. Oh, no, she... I don't think it is Queen Latifah, sorry. Who is it? It's someone else. It's another cheek MC that was... That's, oh, fuck. I feel like a gronk now. It might be her. Because she was big at that time. Yeah. It could... Yeah. Um, yeah. But anyway, that's what the Oz scene is to me. So to talk about the Oz scene, you can't really talk about the Oz scene without mentioning Cursor. It's like I said. And Cursor is like the most deaf. Mm. Like, he's the one that was there. Like, he had it going. You know what I mean? No, I feel like most deaf is not most deaf for fuck's sake. KRS One, sorry, because he made that the bridge is over between that New York and fucking Jersey thing. Mm. You know what I mean? And it's like he showed that everyone was talking about New York, no one was talking about Jersey. And it's like, oi, the bridge is over. Like, and if you get what that means, like the bridge is the fucking new, the what's that bridge called from New York and Jersey? I don't know what it's called. Golden, Golden, Great, Golden Gate Bridge. No, that's no, San Francisco and LA, I think. Or See, that's like. how much I know my geography. But anyway, yeah. Alright, how has the Oz scene impacted us? This is kind of putting onto the same thing as well, though, but we can relate that. How is it? I'm, uh, who wants to kick this one off? Because I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what. I mean, the Oz scene for me, like, it opened my eyes. I'd say that, like, I mean, th there was a time, like, well, about a year or so ago, that I mean, SB did a rant video on it, and I, like I agreed with that. The Oz scene was. Well, oh, that was an Oz scene. That was R and B. R and B. Oh well, well that's I, not the Oz scene. Well, I, I kind of felt that way with the Oz scene, like because the no, problem, the problem is, is no one talks about it. No, no, no. Not enough people talk about it. Not the Pe right people talk about it. Exactly. People keep it to themselves. I mean, there's so many artists out there in Australia that are like, they don't get the recognition they deserve. But then again, at the same time too, like Forte said on the Fortnightly Report with Rops, there are a lot of artists out there that are absolute fucking gronks too. Yeah. I'll admit that. And those yeah, are the no, ones that, that make it. Yeah, exactly. Because, but that's the thing, people are attracted to like, but that's what Dickheads. I <laughs> oh, That's pretty much what, what it is. <laughs> they don't know what you're doing, George. You have to explain. I'm not explaining that on a fucking podcast. No. <laughs> right. You just said the... <laughs> if anybody sees me in person and they want to know what we're talking about on this podcast, I'll quite happily explain to you in person. But other he than that... He did the... <laughs> oh, guys, that shot's fired. Left, right, and center. Fuck it, man. Swagger, you know? I reckon that'd be How shots fired. That'd be shots fired. And uh, this is down. interesting because you're a promoter, so it's like. So from a promoter's point of view, it's yeah. going to be a good perspective. It's weird, man. I, I I never know how to answer this question properly and fully. But that's fine. But but my that's thing the is, from a promoter's point of view, is like, I don't know, man. I'm in love with Australia as a whole. Like ever since. Like, I grew up with one of my homies who's um, rapping again at the moment, Explicit, and he was right into American Rap Man, and like, we listened to American Rap flat out, and then I branched out, and we went our separate ways in life, man, and something just came over me, man, and I just had this thought one day, like, I live in Australia, I want to promote music. I want to promote Australian music as an Australian man. Like, I've got good. nothing against anyone else. I fuck with a lot of American and UK music too. But if I'm going to go out of my way to do something that I don't get paid for, then it has to be something that I'm passionate about. Something man. local. And mm -hmm. one, of the, yeah. one of the ways I, I do actually get paid, man, I get paid in connections. I get paid in getting to meet and people. People love me. But I idolise, yeah. man. Like, like, I sit back at home in my small bumfuck country town, man, in the middle of nowhere. And this knowing is that so many people know you outside <laughs> of there. And that's it, Not man. Not only that, too, but you'll sit there like me. You'll sit. 
in your small country fucking bumpkin town, and then you'll just be, you know, you'll be on your live talking to your boys, and then next minute, you know, you have someone like Lockie jump in. And yeah. just talk to you like he's your mate. But then you, like, to me, I look at Artie, I look at Lockie like a celebrity man. Because he's a rapper. Like, not, not as in, like, I'm going to fucking fanboy out on him or anything like that. <laughs> but you still do. But, <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. I'll admit that. A little bit. But, well, and, and look, man, while we're throwing names around and embarrassing stories, I fanboy out on, like, people like Raj a bit, too. Well, like, fucking hope, man. I'm like, what's crazy it's is... It's because I am passionate for the Australian What's crazy scene, is... Man. I know this because me and Josh, when me and him used to go on lives together, when I used to jump on Josh's lives, <laughs> <laughs> you remember this? Josh used to lose his shit. Dude. I'll never forget that time I was on fucking Nina's live and Juggin and jumped on, and I like, I was like, nah, I'm gonna get out of here. I'm gonna fucking, I'm gonna get myself shot if I say anything. Nah, <laughs> shout out to Juggin. Shout man. out to Juggin. He's a fucking mad cunt, man. I keep going on about my bumfuck town, but at least we got jugs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right, you should be fucking pretty proud that fucking not only that too man fucking what was that one that he did listen up everybody this is ja, ga, da. that was fucking unique in itself mm, la, man. Da, da, da. Yeah, that, that flow that he had in that man is and Jugger is another lad in this scene that's very unique with his with himself being like yeah just let him work his magic obviously he's got magic coming and there's a reason why we waited so long for this to happen and this is why because i wanted more than just mine and drop bear's opinion because i honestly believe striker and eddie know more than me me and drop bear know more underground yeah the reason that we work well as a group man is because as We've much as we fuck with each other yeah, heavy, exactly. yeah. like as we were discussing before, when we all separate after this trip, man, like... We still talk to each other, daily. But not only that, I'll go home and, like, not to throw anyone under the bus or anything, but as the boys said before, like, Drop Bear and SB don't fuck with Kersher as much. But, as a crew, we're still covering all We still have bases. the mutual respect. Yeah. yeah. Like, I'll go home and I'll listen to all Kersher's new shit, so it doesn't matter if SB or Drop Bear don't get around to it. As crazy entertainment as a whole, we're all able to talk about different things in depth. Like, for example, before, when you guys were talking about American artists, that's why I stopped talking a little bit, because in all honesty, because of how passionate I am for the Australian scene, I'm, sl I'm yeah. sleeping on America hard. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, because I just don't have time. There are so many artists, in my opinion, in Australia at the moment that are popping. Like but, yeah, so, you, so the question was that SB asked was um, how much... No, how does how, does, how, did, the, how did the scene impact you? How did, yeah, so yeah, and that's yeah. Basically, as you will hear in part two, I just pretty much summed that up. I don't have a heap more to say about it. I might, I have heaps. But like, yeah, so do I. So I've actually yeah, got. I'll go. Actually, got. Yeah, fucking, but me, yeah. like, I wasn't even into the Oz scene a year ago. One, yeah, man. Like, even like, less a, long than that. I feel actually, like, <laughs> this is wrong because I was into the um. Oh, what do you call that rap? Um, I was, huh? Lo-fi. Like emo. Lo-fi, I think they call it. Emo. Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I was like into that emo Oz hip hop. Sad boy. Like, yeah, sa sad boy rap. Sad boy rap. Like, kind of like XX, Tentacion, and all those guys. Little peep and that. Little peep and that. I was into. That's how I found out of these artists. Like, for example, few artists that myself and Drop Bear used to listen to. Uh, oh, we'll still yeah, do. Yeah, still do. Uh, Sleepy Boy Homeless. Um, this was interesting because this was like a different sound that I never heard of. Like, I've heard of the US one, but I was like, I wonder how they would do it in like the. Oh. Like, how, they, how Australia would make it their own. And what we found out was we found out of artists like the Lucid Boys, which is Cruz, Sleepy Boy. Um, yeah, but who was Davian, the, with them? Davian and Slen. They were developing their own sound. Yeah, they have the Southwest sound, which is so fucking mad. I love it. I've never heard of a sound what they do. I've never heard anything like that. How the hell do you have a metal sound, but you can rap on it? Like I, I remember when I showed Josh. Yeah. Uh, Eddie. I showed Eddie. Who's Josh? I showed, I showed Eddie, Eddie's like, what the fuck are these cunts? I said to you, that my first reaction was, 
Roz, this is an Australian limp biscuit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, look, just to chime in again as to why I'm not speaking much on this man is like I'm just going to be brutally honest. Not a huge. I'm not the hugest. It's same. Fan I'll of agree with that. Like they're, they're, they're the sounds that you're attracted to. But only, not only that, me it was not. I'm attracted to it. I grew up with it. Yeah. So, well, there you go. I so, grew up with the metal scene, like like what you said, Limp Bizkit, Limp Bizkit yeah. Park, and all well, those boys. But, see, oh yeah, I was a bit, little bit more different compared to that. But yeah, I want. No, like that was like a part of my life that I yeah, remember. That, that's that, what like, I mean. I so that's why you that. relate to that side and of And see, music. it's funny different because, to the way I relate for to example, it. there's a song that uh, Sleepy Boy Homeless has that is called Clone at the Discos. At the disco, and you know, um, Panic at the Disco. Yeah. It's like a, it's like a song that's like ripping off one of their songs, and it's fucking dope. And not only that, one of my favorite tracks is called Fog Life, and it's by Sleepy Boy and um, Jerry S. And what they did, they did a fucking Tony Hawk. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, that's yeah. fucking mad. Yeah. Shout out to Jerry S. Like, that's fucking dope. Like, that is something that is like... Bro, when was the last time you heard those sounds? Bro, 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 I remember freaking being a fucking kid and coming over from fucking school and like, you know, Tony Hawk's Underground Man. That's yeah, what that reminded me of when I heard that song. Yeah, like... It was like, it was like you got home and you fucking whacked Tony Hawk in the pants. And it's too. funny because they say that in mm. the song. Mm. If we if we, we don't have to play Tony Hawk uh, Pro Skater 1, we can play Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2. If you don't want to, if you want to have something with me, a joint with me or something, we can play to- Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3. And it's like, it, it went on and on. No, Underground and then, was the best Tony And Hawk then player. the last part, he says something, something, Tony Hawk Underground. And for me, like, that's different. Like, that's a sound that's, like, needed in Australia. Yeah. Like, I remember when Striker asked me, he goes, oh, what, how was Awful Things? Oh, awful things is, awful is, things is, awful amazing. Things is its own thing. Awful things. Shout out to um, Cruz, J. Cruz, bro. He has made he made something like people and persons, but with the freaking sad boy scene. Yeah. And not only that, it's gotten so big that they had artists like Scar Lord. And big American artists come to these gigs. Yeah. And that's pretty cool. For me, like, that's something. Like, it's interesting. For me, the way the Oz scene has impacted me, it's... What... The problem... Like, my biggest problem with the Oz scene is... You only think there's, like... There's rappers like Curse and stuff. You don't hear about these artists. Lucky. Lucky shit like that. Like, but know, even that, like, more artists that you don't hear about too, man. Like we, a lot of them. the venue, the the thing that we're going to, people and persons, we have not heard of majority of them. Like for me, Three Souls, I've heard their body the booth. That was fucking top notch in my eyes. Yeah. That was top notch, and that was enough for me to go. I want to hear more. Same with Matthew. I've heard a couple of his songs, and I was like, bang, I want to hear more. Yeah. Raj, same again. Heard a couple of his songs. Boom, want to hear more. Yeah. And then to see him in person, live. And I'm pretty sure you said the same thing about Motherland. Because when I reacted to him on mm. my live. I did say, yes, I did say that. Both of you did, eh? Yeah. I was even like, who the fuck are these guys, man? Yeah, because you liked the beat. Because mm. the beat was heavy. And I said to you, imagine this live. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was, um, that was energy, wasn't it? Oh, uh, uh, Willow Tree. That's the six. It's, that's yeah. what it's called. Willow tree. Right, I six. put the money in my money yeah. tree. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> like, yeah. Like, shout out to Motherland, though. Yeah. Like, they're, they're dope. They're honestly amazing artists. And, and apologies from Striker, too, for set, for calling him Matherland for the oh, yeah. Yeah, for the last couple of weeks, man. Like, it, like a silly gun. Like, but, yeah. Like, honestly, like, what I think the Oz scene has, and I think this is the difference between the Oz scene and the US scene. Like I said, when you go to a concert, for me, if I'm going to a concert, I want to bring my crew. Like, if I'm a performer, I'm bringing my whole fucking crew. Yeah. 
Yeah. From the bottom For example, the bottom. Little <laughs> Spacely at fucking People oh, Person oh, 1. He brought at least 60 fucking people in that joint. They filled the stage. <laughs> and you know what's crazy, Striker? Mm. All 60 of them performed. Yeah. Like, that is fucking insane. And then, to bring a special guest, he brings in Manu Crooks and You Gotta Be Wise. Oh, oh sorry, fuck, not You Gotta Be Wise. Yeah. And yeah, then, no, I'm pretty sure he's called. No, it, it's You Gotta, like, that's his... Unless he's Insta, Insta, Insta yeah. My bad. yeah. And You got Be Wise, which, it's crazy, I did not notice until recently, Be Wise is from my area. And, and I am... And it's just dope. Like, what I think is mad is that there's artists that will be like, fuck it, I'm, I don't care about getting paid. Because that's the biggest thing you hear in the US. Oh, I don't get paid. Uh, uh. And they're always, like, off their heads and yeah. shit like that. And then you got people... Don't even get me started about rappers off their heads, bro. I'll be here. There'll be seven series of podcasts. But, yeah. And then, as well... The reason I got into the Oz scene, y'all know this story. I've said this about a million times. Shout out to Cash Cow. Striker yeah. knows what I'm talking about. Striker didn't like Auto Tune, but look what Cash Cow and King did to him. I literally listen to Cash Cow and Cash King every single day now, and this is coming from somebody who probably just over a year ago, if you put Auto Tune on your track, I was one of those rude cunt fans that would turn that shit straight off. Yeah. Just not a fan, man. It just didn't settle. Like, it just, yeah, I don't know. Hurt my ears and shit, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It just didn't sound right. For me, it's... But like Cal, I, I feel like how, in my opinion, right. perfected it, in a sense. Mm. <laughs> and he- I'd like to touch my personal opinion on this. What is done for the rap scene? What, what is the Oz scene done for me? Because oh, it's, a little bit diff- it's a little bit different to what you boys have, have said. All right, so for me, what the Oz scene has done for me, in my eyes for myself, is that not only has it given me a confidence boost, but it's also helped me... Mentally. Mentally develop into the person that I'd like to be because... Ah. I'm the same with you. Not only that, man, like, talking... Like, you do... I'll be I'll be honest, man. You do get a bit nervous when you, for example, walking up to fucking, like, Keems or fucking Talakai or someone like that, introducing yourself just to say day. It is a little bit intimidating because you don't know how they're going to appreciate... You know, if they're going to appreciate you or if they're in yeah, a bad mood or whatever. You don't know if they're going to, like... How they're going to react, you know, to Yeah, you that's it. So, like, like for you to go in and, you know, like... Like I said, Grimeway was my first experience of it all. You know, I... Started talking to what, a, what, a expi- what, what a, an experience! What an experience! Yeah, yeah. Say, fucking yeah. Grime Wave, the audio check. Oh, fucking oh, What? Oh. How can you forget the audio check? Oh, oh, oh. oh. wait, it was, was an, an oh, Hang on, hang on. It was an orgasm for your ears, and you had to be there. <laughs> Dead set, man, dead set. I shit you not, bro. <laughs> but that was like it's saying the show. Like, we could have gone home after that, man. <laughs> this is the sound check. That was the sound check. The sound check for like a whole mini video. show. Hey, fans, I wish this was a video. They you did, see these they guys did, right now. They did a live cypher. Yeah. Just, every, mate, just every pass the mic, pass the mic. Like, every was, single person that performed and they weren't standing the on stage science. they were standing at the front of the stage where the crowd would have been standing <laughs> just in a big circle just passing the, the only around. person I think that wasn't there was Salty Sol- no Salty wasn't yeah, there wasn't but there, the, everybody else was there Salty yeah. rocked up a little bit late yeah yeah. and that was, shit was crazy I remember going me and Eddie were looking at each other like this is a fucking sound check. Man, I was catching flies when they were doing that. My mouth was open that wide. I was catching flies, bro. I Dead set. It. Man, fuck it. I got mad love for this country, boy. I love the sayings that you come up with, man. That's, That's like when fucking... eating flies in that. Dead set. was looking at me like... It's like my seagull saying, man. Oi! Do you remember Tev? When he heard... Fuck! Who the and he fuck? Oh, when that random guy jumped up. And that random guy... And just... he did the sound check, though. He was on the sound check as well. Tev was. No, the dude kept doing these. No, I remember. About. I remember. I remember him jumping. That random guy that just jumped up and had a spit out of nowhere, man. Because I was standing. Lockie was standing next to me, and he started spitting. And me and Lockie turned, looked at each other, and we both said, "What the fuck?" Mm-hmm. Looked at the stage, and we just. 
Again, catching fucking flies. I was mm. fucking mouth was that no yeah, fucking fly. You, lock, you can hear Lockie like really <laughs> yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> when um, Drop Bear was recording it, you can hear him in the background. Even, yeah, it's just. Funny. We had a good laugh. That was a good yeah. laugh, man. That night, she had asked the Kames for putting on that fucking event, yeah. and she had asked the Triple Eight bar for having everybody no, no, there. Sorry, I'm really looking forward to like the future event for Grand Wave. Yep. Yep. It's Definitely. going to be the new generation of um, 50-50 fully gassed, in my opinion. I think that was the idea, in a sense. But like Fracture says in, in 50-50, man, like in that in that documentary, like it, everybody makes their own way there. Everybody pays for their own way to get there. Nobody's getting fucking paid. It's all for the love of the fucking scene. And respect for Fracture, the in fucking, my opinion. Man. 100% and it's respect for Fracture, dude. That dude's an OG. I don't know the bloke personally, and I've never met him, but... Fuck, man, I'd like to fucking sit down and have a beer and a chat with that bloke, man. He yeah, fucking man. would be a sick conversation to have. He'd be a mad person I was in Melbourne a couple with. of weeks ago, man, and this is what having no confidence gets you. I literally passed Fracture on the street a couple of weeks back when I was in Melbourne. What? And he was wearing a 50-50 shirt, no, no joke. And this dickhead waited till I got home to message him on Instagram like a little bitch and ask if it was him. Oh. And it was him too. He's like, uh, yeah, probably, man. I hang around in the city all the time. Yeah, so like, told me this. If I had a 50-50 shirt on, then there was a high chance it was me. And I was like, fuck. He's like, you should have stopped and said hello. Like, and especially that he knows who you are. Yeah. But like, yeah, I don't know. I mean, do we have any more topics? To um, want to talk about the upcoming? We've already spoke about all the upcoming events, yeah. Yeah. Actually, no, we haven't. Apocalypse. Girl what game. Girl game. Forgot about girl game. Yeah. What is the guy there? Is that? Um, that's uh, you, got got boy. Girl, you got girl game, and as well, you got um, ill equip um, like a show. Ill equip have a random show with Co- Kobe D. Uh, not. Yeah, Kobe D. Um, Isaac Perel, Kid Kirby, um, and the rest of the lineup that I don't remember. Yo, shout out to Kid right, Kirby. So, just real quickly, just to finish that off for SB because I pulled it up on my phone. Kirby really Dean, no. So we've got the Ill Equip, Two Up, it's called, yeah. with Kid Kirby, Tasman Key, Elijah Yo, Kobe D, Sophia, Isaac Perel, Casper, Deadbeat. Sounds by Hazy and Pro- Prolifics. It's on Friday, June 28th, 6 pm to 10 pm. Next, next That Friday. date actually rings a bell. I have a feeling that might be on the same night as one of the Apocalypse Tours. Yes. It's the yeah. Apocalypse yeah. Tour in Brisbane. Brisbane Tour. Brisbane Tour. So, uh, Ill Equip will be in Sydney for all you Sydney heads. Yeah. Go check that shit out. And as well, tonight, you have the Triple One show as well. Tonight being what date, SB? Just depending on when you post it. So tonight being the 21st of June. Yes. Um, we've got a triple one show. Yeah, there you go. I and where wish they like it was like the next night, so we could have made it to both. Where are triple one performing? It, like, are they in Sydney? Are oh, they in, in Melbourne? Sydney, sorry, oh, yeah. in Sydney. So it's... triple one are performing tonight, the 21st of June in Sydney. Yeah. And as well, ironically, they dropped their EP that day. Oh, yeah, and just a heads up for anybody else who didn't realise, like myself, and is a bit skint on the old money but wants to hear um, the Triple new al- Triple One's new album. EP. EP, sorry. Go and check that shit out on um, SoundCloud. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it would be as simple as literally typing in Triple One, search it up, look for their latest shit. Yeah. Check that shit out. These kinds of killing. But anyway, this right is now. this is us coming to the end of the podcast. Honestly, we hope y'all enjoy it. You see, we I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know, know if anybody else is keen on this. I'm just speaking off the top of my can tongue. I just, can I just quickly but just say? I'm still talking. So big, just wait a second. Yeah. big big shout outs to fucking oh, SV. No. For fucking funding fucking this trip for me and Striker. Fucking big shout outs to fucking Espy's mum for fucking all the work behind the scenes that she's done. Fucking big shout outs to Drop Bear for fucking everything that you've done. Shout outs to Espy, shout outs to Striker, shout outs to fucking all the artists at fucking Grimewave, all the artists that fucking that'll be at people in person tonight. 
And other than that, fucking, I am fucking keen to fucking meet more of you people. Yeah, and shout do out to more all the artists at every other event we've been and to. And fucking, shout out to all the artists in Australia, man. You just kind of fucking holding this shit down hard and fucking keep doing what you're doing because some of us actually fucking love it. Even, what, even to the guys that are there, you know, low key, that are writing their own stuff, you know, they're not, not even making moves yet, just in the process of making moves. Keep doing and it. And One as day, well, you're gonna make it. And yeah. as well, shout out to all the fans that support Crazy Ant, Eddie's Rapping Adventure. And big striker promotion, and as well, shout out to the people that jump on our lives. Yeah, we love you guys. Like sure. honestly, we love you guys. You know who we, you all know who you are. Yeah. And that's yeah, the consistent that ones are my favorite. So yeah, they... real recognize real man. For yeah, real. my boy, boy. Yeah, my boy. I was just saying, I don't want to do any special shout outs and that, but like, mad ups faded. <laughs> 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 but yeah, honestly, all I gotta say is keep living a crazy life. Stay blessed. Crazy for the culture. Ow! Peace!